Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh man, what did I do? Uh, uh, uh. Upload. Here we go. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. We're back. So, can, can you hear me now? Uh, the mic is low still. Right. So, before when the mic was low, I wasn't even using the right microphone. So the settings are a little, uh, a little wrong. <laughs> uh, and double audio. Uh, there we go. Is that? There. We... <laughs> Welcome to the uh, to the stream. Yeah. So the first one's going to be janky, all right? Sounds like the wrong mic is used, like an echo. So I think I've got the camera audio on and the microphone audio. Then over there, there was another camera and it was that. Is that, has that fixed it? Dave's saying fixed. See, streaming isn't easy. That is why we're gonna do 12 streams and learn how to stream. So the first problem that went wrong was the wrong microphone was on, but then when I turned the right microphone on, it made Streamlabs crash like loads of times. Is that better? Can we, can we hear me? Yeah, good audio now. Yeah. It, it's amazing what a difference it makes when you actually use the right microphone, isn't it? <laughs> we have music too. Was the music? Do we need music? Well, before when I when I kind of tested it, um, there was some like nice lo-fi Christmas music, which I thought sounded cool. But I'm also going to have to add the microphone to every um, every scene that I do now. Um, so music is bad. You do not like the music. I don't even know if the music's on. Can, can you hear the music? If you don't want music, then I uh, guess we don't, don't need music. But anyway. Should we, should we get into starting things? Hello. My name is Mark. You probably already know that if you're watching this, because I think the chat is just subscriber people. So welcome your faces. Um, where are you all? I think I can see people saying that the, the microphone's okay now. So yeah. Christmas music is soul crushing after working years in retail. Yeah, fair one. <laughs> Hello from the USA. Yeah, so at the beginning of the year, I did say I wanted to start trying to stream more and I did do a few streams, which some of them were good. Some of them were like this. I think this is the only one where I've actually had crashes, but you know, you, you learn. But I'm using a whole, a whole new setup and before I actually had a little camera here and I was going to be like, hey, check out this setup, but um, that's, that's not gone. That's not gone as planned. Wow, well, Belfast, Sweden, Denmark. When I had the music on before, it overpowered your voice. It's better without, you just get to hear my voice. Slovakia. Wow, there's people from all over. Welcome your faces. So yeah, this is this is the first stream. What I wanna try and do throughout December, um, it's not gonna be every day because I probably physically can't do every day. But what I'd like to do is do a stream for maybe an hour. I don't want to commit to a set time because then you know what I'm like with committing to things. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to try and do a stream every day. There you go. Not every day. I'm going to try and do a stream, 12 streams across the whole of December just to try and improve and to try and get better. And then next year, hopefully we can have like some regular streams and do some cool things. I really enjoyed the last one that I did. The last one I did was the, if you if you tuned into that, was we did the raspy setup. 
and I didn't read any documentation. I just jumped straight into it. And we had Mike, the guy that actually creates it. He joined the chat and he was kind of guiding me through and that was really cool. Hello from the Netherlands. Okay, so is everyone ready for Christmas? What's everybody doing? Give me two seconds. On that last, um, on that stream that was working, I did have some questions come through. I would like to check out. I think I've also got some Patreon ones too. Do, 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 do. So, 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 so. Hello, hello, hello. Um, was it you, Steve? I feel like it was you that messaged me on Patreon. If you're in the chat, Steve, was it you? Oh, okay. I can see one in the chat there, Mr. Pitbull. You do know that my name is Mark, right? It's Mark. It's Mark Wattek. Not subject to belief. It's not Matt. And I get called Matt frequently, daily, in fact, uh, with emails. I think people just look at Mark Wattek and just go like... Also, the bearded tinker started this rumour, I feel, and it just uh, increased from there. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, but I don't know. Just everyone assumes that my name's Matt. So, But my name is not Matt. My name is Mark. And Johnny as well. Johnny was also one of those instigators of the whole Matt thing, if Johnny is still in the chat. Uh, Steve, are you in the chat? Are you still here? You were using some secret alias, I saw. Why is Patreon messages so hard to use? Damn it. Okay, let's check on my phone because I'm sure it came. Oh, okay. Steve, I think you asked me if I wanted to do a, a test, but I kind of just gambled on the fly to figure out what was uh what it was but yeah uh, see johnny is here it's not matt fellow mark we have a fellow mark in the chat mark's a great name <laughs> so what's everyone been doing for christmas with their um their automations and i did see somebody talk about the yuffie thing that was one of the questions that i just seen on the other chat so the whole the whole yuffie thing what's everyone's thoughts on that are you big Eufy users? I actually used Eufy. I have a Eufy doorbell, so all of my stuff is probably, uh, all my faces is for, <laughs> for everyone to see. No, I haven't seen uh, the hookups video, John, on on the Eufy stuff. What's he saying? Maybe I'll watch it later. Was he saying good things or bad things? So I, I haven't fully read up everything on the whole the whole Yuffie stuff. Uh I've I've just read bits. I haven't I've been super busy and literally haven't had time to delve into the whole thing. So if anyone in the chat wants to educate me, um from what I know, there's been unsecure I mean like the thumbnails or something, was it? The thumbnails you could access the thumbnails and some particular models of camera you could get their streams or something. I I'll probably watch the hookups video. <laughs> He's going to bat for, for Yuffie. As in, he's going to bat them, like smash them with a bat, or he's uh, saying that Yuffie are all good. I, th I think it all started, didn't it? With, didn't Linus do a video? And it kind of went, went from there. So Johnny hooked up his plants to Me Floor and ESP Home. Is that is that for Christmas, Johnny? Is that, have you done that as a Christmas thing? Yeah, I'm, I'll, I will definitely watch Rob's video and see what Rob was saying about the whole Yuffie thing. It's a shame really, because, uh, I mean, Yuffie make some nice stuff, so I imagine they're going to take a massive, uh, I imagine they're going to take a big hit from uh, whatever was said.
Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I can't really comment just because I haven't, I haven't fully read up on the whole Yuffie thing. So if Rob's saying it's not as bad as what people say, from what I know, it was the. I, I mean, I don't even know how the stream thing works. I, I saw like literally an article saying like, stream Yuffie to VLC unencrypted. Um, but yeah, what's the latest in the twenty twenty two dot twelve release? Well, fellow Mark. I'm glad you asked because uh, I, if if you didn't know the creators, so all the guys that you see doing sort of YouTubey things with Home Assistant, uh, we get to actually speak to Paulus and the developers, and yeah, we get to like have a little chat about the release and what's happening, what's going on. So imagine like the uh, the release party, but with like you know YouTube creators and the Home Assistant developers. It's really cool. It's really chilled out, and we just get to chat about the new things that are coming. So. I did that last night actually, um, and it was really cool. Lots of, as as you'd expect with the Home Assistant release, lots of um, of cool things. Should we should we have a look at the notes? As always, I will be covering it in a little video because I I just enjoy those videos. They're nice videos to to do, and I just kind of pick the features that I really like, the things that I enjoy in the update, and that's like what I've done. So it's usually different to what everyone else kind of does. If you see me looking up here as well, like why are you like looking into the sky? Um, I've now got like a nice monitor, like just at the top of me here. It kind of goes over my head, so that's that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> uh, the release notes, where are they? Um, Frank sent them to me. Where is it? Oh, damn it! I also also being the streamer noob that I am, I also forgot to. Uh, to announce that we're actually streaming. So usually somebody will nudge me and say, hey, you've you forgot to, to to announce the stream and all of that stuff. So let's just do that and then I'll pull up the release notes. So we are now live. Man, streaming is hard. I think it's, well, streaming is different because you, you do everything live and on the fly. So usually all this janky stuff you don't see like in a nice cut it and formatted video. As you probably saw, if you watched the, uh, if you watch that raspy one, it's all a bit janky. And let's jump on Facebook. And if you're, if you're not following me on the Facebooks and Twitters, go follow me. We are live. I'll I'll try and change the camera for you in a sec as well, so you're not just staring at my face. Okay, posting, posting, posting. Here we go. So John's saying he understands where you fear coming from and it's all blown out of proportion. Your Google notifies you when I'm live streaming. That's that's cool. Is that an, an automation? Live stream automation. You, you probably need that to be fair, Johnny, because you know how I like, I'm like, hey, I'm doing a live stream like one minute before it goes live and then I don't announce it or do anything. So if you want to, if you want to join them, that's probably the best way to, uh, to find it. Okay, that's done. So let's get those released notes. Um, la, 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 la. By the way, if you didn't know, the last, the last Wednesday of the month, apart from yesterday, because it didn't happen, is, no, not the last Wednesday. Is it the last Wednesday? Yes, the last Wednesday of the month is when the Home Assistant beta releases. So usually you'll see everyone doing videos and the actual Home Assistant release party going live sort of the first Wednesday of the month, because the first Wednesday of the month is when the Home Assistant update releases. And anyone is able to join the Home Assistant beta, but obviously it's a beta, so do expect some uh, bugs. And not everything to work and also things that get listed or added in the beta may actually be removed on the final date so there you go um and if you're wondering about the the release notes anybody can access the beta release notes too so 
Should we have a little sneak peek? If I can get this to uh to work. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And dum 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 dum. Oh, I need to add my audio source first. So if we suddenly crash now, it's be it's because I haven't set this up properly and it's all uh it's all janky. So the next the next stream will be uh it'll be on point and it will uh, it'll work. So we're gonna add an audio input and it's this one. Add. And now we want to add the release notes. Here's something else that might uh crash me now. EDM. Uh okay. Let's do it. Did we crash? We didn't crash. Cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> release notes coming at your face. Move this. And. Ooh. Ah, oh, thank you for my tea, Rachel. How do you crop the camera? Is it control? I'm sorry that you can't see anything other than my face uh, looking at stuff. Bear with me, we are getting there. The, the key is alt, by the way, if you're uh, stretching your camera. Oh no, I've stretched, I've stretched myself the wrong way. <laughs> okay, here's a very squished version of me, but three, two, one, transition. That, it didn't transition, did it? Did we, did we transition and we, we didn't crash? Did we transition? I think we did. I think we did. I'm very squished now. Like, my head's not this uh, square. <laughs> uh, let's catch up on the chat. Oh, I see we've got Alex in the house. Hey, Alex, you've missed nothing. You've missed the usual janky start up to my streams we even had some crashes ah uh, thank you wayne um alt is the key i was looking for for obs yep okay uh ah oh, damn it i didn't even get the release notes skadoosh close that make that big can we hide that little uh, alert box thing? What, what is that thing? That, there we go. Is that, we can see, we can see. Wow, this is weird. I've never done like a Home Assistant release live. I'm not gonna run through all of this now. So if you are interested, this is live, um, but it'll be next week. I don't, you, sometimes I do the beta stuff, uh, but I don't usually like to say, this is all the stuff that's coming because quite often things can be released. So you may notice the, matter on there um so matter is coming and it's going to be it's going to be like the first implementation of it so it's still early on and you know there's you can't really buy loads of matter devices anyway so it's not going to be like you're going to install that and then everything's going to be matter and last night i know that there were some issues with a build with matter so if you are one of the beta people that's why the 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 build was held up i think it was because of um matter but yeah Does matter matter? What what are your thoughts on matter? Does matter matter to you? Are you gonna swap everything for matter? Uh, let's just catch up on this chat. So Johnny, your YouTube hacks integration. Ah, uh, cool. Does it is it literally just a sensor? And if the person comes online, it says yes or no kind of thing, and you just do that. Yeah, Bearded Tinker is the guy to go to. How's the weather for for me? Was that was that for me? The weather here in the UK, it's really cold. I I say really cold. I know it's not. What's the temperature now? It's like four degrees. That's cold for the UK. Nothing else matters. Yeah, the uh, the Royal Mail strike, Alex. They've 
yeah, all of my parcels have been delayed. But I'm glad you finally got your uh, your Akara stuff through AliExpress. I'm I'm still actually waiting for a load more of the uh, the millimeter wave sensors. You want to see where that goes before you bite into it. Yeah, that's a, a good one. So onto the release. I'm 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 not going to run through this all. Like I'll uh, I'll save it as a surprise for you guys next week unless you want to go and read this yourself. And and yeah, I'll I'll it's here. So if you want to go and read it, you can go and read it. <laughs> but I'm not going to run through it just because some things are likely to change. Um, and yeah, the you got the release party is what you watch the release parties for because you see the actual the guys that do all the work. They do all the hard work, and you get to see them talk about it and show the stuff off. So. Yeah. <laughs> what was the actual question about the release anyway? Was it just what's come in? So there is some really nice things in there. One of the ones that I really like that's come in is if you if you're doing like energy monitoring and you've got two different two different tariff rates, there's an easy way of doing that and it's the what was the original sensor called? I can't even remember what the sensor called. But there's an easy way to do that now, which is one that I've been, I've been meaning to make a template sensor for that for ages, and now there's just a convenient way to do that through the GUI. What else did I really like from last night? Um, Twinkly, if you're a Twinkly user, there's a, especially with Christmas, if you haven't seen Twinkly, they make a whole bunch of different lighting things, um, mainly for like holiday seasons, but they're, you can have them out all year if that's what you do. But they're, they're like an off-the-shelf, uh, smart, decorative lighting type thing. So unless you're one of those WLED people that just want to WLED all the things. Oh, your things aren't here yet. Sorry, Alex. They're in transition. Almost here then. Maybe when the Royal Mail strikes finish. Have they finished? I don't I don't actually know. I've, I've lost track. <clears throat> hey, Ahmed. Uh, why did your home assistant crash? I don't know. Have a look at the glow in home display. Yes, that thing is cool. I've got one of those and they work really well. Uh, the glow in home display, basically it talks Zigbee to your smart meter and you get a live um, a live feed of how much energy you use in, in kilowatts. And what's cool about that is that device can then also talk MQTT using Wi-Fi to Home Assistant so you can get live readings straight from your meter, which is really nice. So a lot of the way that people usually do it in the UK is they connect to their um, energy provider, like, I don't know, Octopus or who else Who else do you want? Who else have like a nice API where you can just pull stuff? I'll, I'll just use Octopus as my example. But anyway, you'll connect to Octopus to get your information. And usually that information will be a bit delayed or a day or so behind d depending on who your energy is with and what their api is like but this little this little device connects to your meter it gives you that live uh, information so it's cool i do have a video coming out on one of those things it's literally just a case of finding the time to do it um but there that's it's a, a cool thing to have in your home if you're in the uk um i don't know about anywhere else but yeah i think we we're talking about the same thing anyway were we, Alex? I'm sure we spoke about this before. I think we're talking about the same thing. Sh should we have a look? Let's uh, let's check that we're talking about the same thing because we just got this Home Assistant screen up. Um, dum, 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 dum. Oh, we're in full screen now. Oh. Can we get out of full screen, please? There we go. Do, 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 do. It's the Hild. I can't. I can't spell Hild. Brand. Glow. By By the way, can you see the actual um text and stuff? Okay. Um, because sometimes if I accidentally leave HDR on, it like blows the screen out and it goes um. It goes super white. Was, was it this thing, Alex? This was the thing that you were talking about?
Yeah, we spoke about it a year ago. Yeah, so basically, if you've got a Smets two meter, this thing will uh, this thing will work for you. So, yeah, and it's really cool. Uh, yeah, it does gas too. Um, who said gas? Wayne. Yeah, you you can view gas in there too. So you get a nice little screen, and this information pulls out into Home Assistant, and it's local. Or you can do it with the cloud if you want to. If you use the, so there's an app called the Bright app. So uh, you, you can do this now if you want to, if you want to kind of test this out. So this is the cloud version of it. But if you download the Bright app on your phone, um, enter all the information about your Smets 2 meter, you'll then be able to poll the cloud and get information about your meter. But I, I can't remember, Alex, I don't know if you've used the Bright app. I can't remember that conversation, sorry. Um, but I can't remember what the time delay was if you use the Bright app. So yeah, if you use the this little in-home display thing, and it's the same size as the other like energy providers uh, meters, and it looks quite nice as well. But if you use this, that data is pretty much live with MQTT. And it's all local, so that's cool. Right, what are we saying? Does, does anyone does anyone use one of these things by the way? Yeah, Alex Alex has got all the information on this. Was that 30 minutes delay? Um I sure I can put the uh I can put the the link to this in the video description and I'll do that now before I forget. But yeah, does anyone does anyone use one of these? I really like it and yeah, I do have a video coming out on it soon hopefully like sooner rather than later but if you're in the uk it's a, a cool thing to have um here we go live uh what's it called again is it is it just the glow what do we what do we actually call this thing Display and CAD. There we go. That should be in the uh, in the description. Oh, Alex doesn't have one. Oh, okay, maybe maybe if you're really interested in this thing, maybe I can. Um, maybe I'll in the next stream we'll pull this up um, because the next stream is going to be less janky, obviously. So so maybe if you're if you're interested in seeing this thing, maybe I'll put like a little home assistant page up and we can have a look at this thing in there. I can't go and get it now because it's in the kitchen. Um, well, I could I could, but I, I'm I'm not going. <laughs> um, yeah. So this thing connects to the Smets too. I've lost the page. It's here. Yep. And it and it pretty much just looks like the other in-home displays. 3.5 inch color touchscreen, and the bright app. So this this page is linked in the description if you want to check this out. But you can try out the bright app, which is going to let you connect to your Smets too and get the information through through the cloud. So you can actually set that up, and then if you happen to buy one of these, you can just link this and also pull the information through. So, yeah, sixty nine pounds, seventy pounds. There is a, a Smets One one as well. If you have a Smets One, um, I'm not sure what the difference is. But yeah, again, I've got a video coming out on this uh, soon, hopefully soon. And if you would happen to to be interested in checking one of these out, then yeah, we'll we'll bring it in for the next video. I, th I think, Wayne, I think if you actually get the Bright app, I think it actually guides you through the setup of like explaining what kind of meter you have. Um, I've not used it in such a long time, but I'm sure it does. Yeah, and yeah, if you've got this, yeah, exactly what Alex said there. If you've got a Smets one, then energy companies will be pushing you to replace it anyway. So uh, was it the same price if you got the Smets one? Yeah. So you may as well save that seventy pounds and just wait till they swap your um your meter out and probably just stick with the the app. 
But yeah, if you're interested in that, we can do a little run through maybe of the app as well. Um, see, I had everything organized. Like we had a nice top down camera and we had like a thing where I could cast my phone and do all those things. And we had a crash and now nothing works. So super fun times. What are, what are people that are not in the UK using for energy monitoring devices, especially things that are local? What are you um what are you using? I can't remember what the um do you know the little blinky light one? What's that one called? It's that Marcel's one. Oh, so this is what I was looking for about the Smets one stuff. Um, so Oop. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm struggling to make that readable. <laughs> I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. The Smets 1 variant does not publish the full data history is kind of the main um is kind of the main thing there really. Oh, and it also does say it also does say in that uh, bit of information there the the time for the the bright stuff is 30 minutes. And I've not I've not seen this. Oh, it's a Smets 1 thing that's probably why I've not seen it. So this is a low cost Wi-Fi enabled consumer accessory device. CAD. <laughs> but it's another MQTT device if you're a Smets. Smets one. Smets one meet we, we, meters are replaced by your supplier with Smets two. So while we're kind of talking about energy, does anyone have in the UK um in the UK specifically, um, do you have anything that's monitoring your solar panels? And if so, what is it? How does it work? And if you're not in the UK, also, what are you uh, what are you using? If you're not in the UK, I'm going to imagine that you get more sunshine anyway. So, Dave is using the Aotech Meter Gen Five. How is that? Any good? Maybe uh maybe one day, Alex. I'm sure I'm sure BT just did uh the Bearded Tinker recently did a video on like the solar panel stuff. Like create your own solar panels. Did he? He did something like that, I'm sure he did. Wow, a quote for solar panels. Is that for like a full kit up, is it? For all the solar panel stuff. 20 grand. That's a lot of monies. So solar has definitely come down in price in the UK. Um, like definitely over the last couple of years. Um... You can hear a dog or somebody sneaking in. Um, I also just saw Rob's video. Um, for the, what's it called? Eufy stuff. So I'm going to watch that after. Find out, find out what Rob's take is on, uh, hookups take is on the, the whole Eufy situation. Yeah, somebody's somebody sneaking in is either a, a kid or or it's casper so you might just see like a little wolf head just pop up here <laughs> um 
out of interest, what would you like to see over over the course of these streams? I mean, this one is obviously the intro. This is the intro one, so we're, we're not we haven't got high hopes for this one. But um, what would you like to see in the other ones? Would you like me to do a set topic or just wing it on the day? I do have some like little um some little parcels and things that we could we could go through. But if you didn't know, I have a cardboard allergy, which is why I don't do uh unboxings. I know what a what a rubbish allergy to have. But I've got some cool toys. Oh, it was Rachel Watt sneaking in. Did you shut the door, Rachel? <laughs> some node red stuff, yes. So I literally have a list of like videos where I have started videos and I start them and either when I'm editing them or maybe sometimes, which is quite sad really when it happens, but when you've edited them fully and then you just think, oh, I really don't like that or it hasn't gone the way I wanted it to. Um, or something happens, like this has happened to me so many times, especially with home assistant content, is you can spend ages creating a video, edit it, and then when you go to release it, you see that that feature has now become deprecated or it just doesn't exist anymore or it's moved and then you've either got to just scrap the whole thing or start again. So that's a, a sad one. Yeah, I, I actually use the Eufy Jewel as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll do some research on the whole Yuffie thing and I'll give you my take on that in the next stream because I've yeah, I I can't really comment really because I don't I've just read bits and yeah. See I I didn't even watch Linus's full thing. Alex we were messaging about this the other night, wasn't it? Hey Claire. Um yes, I am still using the NS panel and if it comes in time, I've got a nice little um, Christmas package that is going to be in one of the 12 streams from Sonoff, and it's going to be some new gadgets that they're bringing out, but also it's a white version of the NS panel, uh, the, the Pro, NS panel Pro. So maybe I can do some cool things with that. Um, if, if NS panels is something that you'd like to see in one of, the, one of these streams, maybe we can do some NS panel stuff. With my NS panel, the Pro, um, so how many how many have I got set up in the house at the minute? I think there's three. There was one on my desk literally before the start of this stream, but I moved it to tidy up. But I've got three. I've got two pros and then one um oh one one just normal NS panel. The normal NS panel I've got in place because it's a place on the wall where I actually physically need those two buttons. Um but I don't really do much with the screen on that anymore just because yeah, I just don't really. Um, I use it for alert sometimes and I use it with the Alarmo system. So if you lock the house, that will change red and do some fancy bits. But the NS Panel Pro, I've got one of those upstairs and I use kind of like a grid dashboard, which again, I can I can run through when we have the other uh, streamy bits working. But I use like a little, a little grid kind of system where you, you can click big squares to, to jump into things. So, yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm using mine for, and it's in the exact same setup that I did for the the NS Panel Pro video, like um, however many however many weeks back that was. Um, gosh, how long ago was that? It was a while ago. Um, let's transition back. Where is the web? Um, so the video that I was talking about is this one, the, the, that one, how to, how to home assistant, how to, did I even type, can I, am I just reading that really dumb? How to home assistant on the NS Panel Pro, fully local. Man, I'm tired. Yeah, but <laughs> anyway, Claire, that video, the setup that I do in that is the exact setup that I've had running on my panel and I've had no issues with it it's since installing it. It's been like that. 
The only thing that 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 configuration that I showed there doesn't do is it doesn't automatically, if the power cuts, you have to manually restart the Home Assistant app. But that's kind of up to to you if you wanted to change that or not. You could just install another app that kind of just automates whatever app runs. Um, I've not had any issues with that. I was using fully kiosk, not fully kiosk, whatever the kiosk hack, whatever the foot, the, it's not fully kiosk, fully kiosk is a separate thing. The kiosk front end change, which is available in hacks, um, just to make the, the little grid thing full screen. Um, can I get a nice, a nice look at it on my phone here? Oh man, I wish my little phone sendy thing was working because that would have been nice but it kind of look is this going to be terrible it kind of looks like this it's like little uh little squares and then you can like go into the square and then it's more squares but obviously on the on the smaller screen the small little square that looks quite nice but yeah that's the setup that i've been using Um, what was your, what was your thing there, John, for wanting to see, wanting to see more of those? Was that the NS panel? Um, yeah, polls is probably, polls is probably a good idea for, um, content maybe i'll just like do it on the day or something um or maybe i can pick a few topics and we can spread them out over a, a series of a stuff any suggestions for uk no neutral dimming light switches um do shelly have a no neutral one shelly have a no neutral dimmer i, th I think I'm not actually using Shelly myself um, anymore. Uh, all of my stuff is um, Akara. Akara do have some um, with the no neutral one. Is it just no neutral because you have got no... Is it no neutral because you have no neutral? Is that the uh, the reason? And yeah. I mean, the, the thing that I like about um, about having neutral... <clears throat> the... The thing that I like about having neutral is you get some extra nice features, like you get like the overload protection and energy monitoring. Maybe you get energy monitoring on some no neutrals, but <clears throat> maybe get Miss What to Mrs. Miss Ms. Yeah, get her on <laughs> to talk about her point of view on the smart home. I don't, I don't think she would go on uh, on camera, especially not on a live stream. But yeah, maybe uh, maybe she could give her um, opinion on a smart home. I have I have asked her before actually about something like that, like where she could um, commentate on what it's like to actually live in a smart home. Um, because she'll have views of when things work and when things don't work. But I've got to say, and I, I don't know, I feel like maybe she would agree that since moving to this house, I designed it in a way or tried to design it in a way as best as I could where everything would be local, but also the smart things wouldn't be crazy exaggerated. So if you go up to a light switch, it's a light switch. So a normal person could use it by pressing it or you could use your phone or your voice or it could be automated um so lighting is obviously an easy one but the same with things like um smart blinds you could use a remote you could press the button on it you could use your voice all those different input methods so if you wanted it to be smart it could and if you didn't want it to be smart then you could just use them how you normally would oh she's in the uh she's in the comments <clears throat> yeah I'm, I'm sure she'd have some bad things to say about the smart home especially for a period when i i ran the whole um like development build of home assistant as the, <laughs> on my actual production box that that was a uh, that was not a good one but i recently swapped over my home assistant from 
again, gosh, this would have been a long time. Whenever I did the Proxmox video, I haven't been I haven't been running on Proxmox, but whenever I did that video on the HP G2, uh, the little, it's just a mini form factor PC, I've been running it solidly on one of those, but I just swapped it, just trying to be a bit more energy con, energy con conscious. Yeah, trying to be better with uh, managing my energy and whatever. And I swapped to another mini PC that uses less power and also has a similar spec. And again, I'm actually waiting for a mini PC. So if you're interested in a mini PC build, maybe we could do one live. <clears throat> um, Aurora makes some really nice smart products. I really like... Who said that? Sorry. Arnie Sue. Uh, Aurora makes some really nice smart products. I really like their plug sockets. Um, they're Zigbee based. And I think they also do Wi-Fi ones too. But they're, they're just really nice. I like the fact that you can actually control how bright the little LED rings are. And you get energy monitoring with them too, which is cool. Oh, the Pro is not available in Australia. Is the standard version available in Australia? I feel like Australia miss out on some tech sometimes. I don't know why that is. So, John, you really like the Akara motion sensors. You just wish there was a way to change the timer without taking the thing apart. Have you... Oh, let me see if I can reach this one. Have you seen the, the newer variant of the Akara sensor? Because I'm guessing you've got... I'm guessing the one that you're using, maybe, is probably one of those ones, the... Uh... The original ones but there is a, a p1 variant or are you using the p1 so the, the p1 variant um have a look at those 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 actually allow you to adjust the the timings a little bit so you can adjust that um adjust that time out without having to take it apart because when you were taking it apart were you doing the little um the little akara hack where you you draw draw the line on the pcb to to make the timings go faster but yeah, I, I think those P1s are like fully available to buy in the UK now, um, and they're like a decent price. Or they're the same price as the old sensors used to be. Um, they were released quite a while ago, actually, I think. Um, so I did start a series. A series, another series. I always start series, don't I? Um, I did start a series on building an Akara smart home. Because I I love Akara's products, um, so I hope one day we never have like a big Akara fiasco where Akara have sold all of your data or something. Because um, I mean, all of my Akara stuff's local anyway. But um, yeah, I, I hope they they don't do anything bad. <laughs> but all of my stuff's Akara um, lights, sensors, switches. I I just really like their stuff. It just works really well, and I don't have any issues with it. Um, but what what six months ago that. Jesus, six months ago was that the last one I did? I do have another Akara video <laughs> coming out, um, which actually shows off some of the automations and stuff that I use. I it's just time. I just I really haven't had time. If you've been watching my stuff regularly, you've probably seen that like the last the last couple of months really. Um, it's I I started a new job and since taking on that new job, I've just. I've just been more tired and I've just found it really hard to find that time to actually sit and create my regular content. So I've just had less content coming out and that's basically, I, 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 not that I have a strict schedule or anything, but videos that I plan just get pushed out and then I just kind of pick from my pool of what I what I feel like doing on that day really or what's what's relevant sort of, sort of thing. Um, but yeah. Um, the P the P ones have been out for a, a while, <clears throat> and you can probably buy them in a, a big bundle on on AliExpress. <clears throat> ah, cool. So you bought those Aurora sockets. 
Um, mine have been solid. I mean, I, I think I've got four installed in the house and I've had no problems um, whatsoever with them. And I use them with Zigbee to MQTT as well. Um, yeah, zero issues with the reliability. I've never had to reset them or modify them since setting them up. Um, yeah, same as like with power cuts and power outages and stuff. They've always come back up and worked. So Brad, you feel like sometimes sometimes you have to send out maintenance notices. Is that like a maintenance notice about your smart home? Oh, so if you were interested in what Rachel was saying about our smart home, she's saying that she she likes this house better <laughs> more better she likes the house more because um things tend to work a lot more but i think that is because everything's more local and you've got multiple um multiple ways of using and controlling stuff without having to you, you know like you could pick up a remote or you could press a button and she really likes the christmas tree lights yeah they are the twinkly tree lights rich yeah um, we're approaching the hour, so when we get to the hour, I'll probably like call this one uh call this one done. Um, I'm sorry that like it literally hasn't been the stream that I wanted to do. Uh, if if you've been watching from the beginning, I I had everything planned out and all all nice and ready to go, and then yeah, the stupid software crashed and um I can't get any of this stuff to work. So I just thought I'd sit and talk to you for an hour. <laughs> but yeah in the next one we'll do a little poll or something and we'll have everything nice to go we'll have some nice examples and it'll be good it'll be good uh yeah the job is going good thank you very much why did i choose um zigbee to mqtt as opposed to zha well I, I personally just really like um, Zigbee to MQTT. If anything's not supported, I find it easier to manually create the stuff yourself using Zigbee to MQTT. Just that whole interface, it's nicer. Um, you also don't have to run it on the same um, the same machine. Um, yeah, it's just, just personal preference, really. Uh, I was thinking the other day, as I was saying about using the mini PCs, I might, because I'm still waiting to get a... Um, a Pi compute module, the, the eight gig one, because they're like gold dust and they're still really hard to get. But I'm still waiting to get a hold of one of those. But I was thinking of fully committing and swapping over to the yellow and using the Home Assistant yellow as my my main um, machine. Um, but if I do that, I'll probably use ZHA. So, but yeah, I, I use ZHA. I actually started off with Decons and went from Decons to ZHA. And I used ZHA for a long time. And actually, it was when I when I moved here, when I moved to this house. So nearly a year now, nearly a year of using um, Zigbee to MQTT. And I've not had any like real issues with it. But it's it's personal preference, really. I my my main one is if I need to add a device that isn't supported and just fiddling around, I find it easier and simpler to use that. <clears throat> what does the log entry from Akara mean? What log entry? What was the log entry? Sorry, Thomas. I've got I've got like um I've got two different feeds here, so this uh, the feed the messages don't always come in at the same time that you sent them, so you might have like muddled your message up if you answered it. You thought YouTube was my full time gig? Um, no, <laughs> no, YouTube is my part time gig. Um, yeah, so full time is not my full time job. I've well, I was a software developer and I recently became a sysadmin. 
So that's my my day to day job. And then in the evenings, I spend my time doing this or not this because I don't usually do janky live streams. I usually do the YouTube videos that you will have seen. But that's what I spend my evenings doing. And I also have three kids and a big old husky. So it's a lot. <laughs> but out of curiosity, what what was the first uh, what was the first video you saw, John? of my channel um alex did did i get the prelit tree or string lights i will show you now my friend um transition i never know if that's going to work just from it um from crashing um so twinkly let's have a look at the old twinkly i do have a um I do have a video coming out on Twinkly as well, um, which I was trying to get done before the whole, before Christmas. Um, so, so if people like them, they could, they could get them. Um, but yeah, I just haven't because there's the Home Assistant in 2022.12, there's a new update coming out for Twinkly where it's going to let you do more things because at the moment there is a Twinkly integration but you can basically change the color, which is like a whole block color. So the tree can be all red or all blue or all whatever color you want. Um, and you can't do any of these fancy effects that you can like see in this little tree here. You can't do that with Home Assistant. And if you turn it off and turn it back on, sometimes it doesn't come on. And that's just the integration. So my way around that was using, because those trees have HomeKit, if you add them through HomeKit, you can turn them on and off with no problems and change the color. You just can't do effects. So in that new update, you can do effects. So yeah, I was just, just waiting for that to come out really. Um, so Alex, the one, oh, they're an Italian company, by the way, if I didn't say that. So we'll switch to, switch to English because I don't speak Italian. The one that I got, Alex, was the, I think it is just the multicolored one. I think. I'd, I'd have to check. It's it's one of the two. Um, but it's, I, it's, it's IP rated as well. So if you want to use them outside, you can do. Um, but do they have any cool examples? I mean, if my phone thing's working, I could show you on my phone. But if you've seen like cool WLED effects, it's like, you know, you, it's a bit like that. Um, may, in the app, you do you do everything with the app, really. You, you can draw on your tree and whatever you draw, like on your tree on your phone, appears on the tree. And what is really cool about these things is you actually 3D map your Christmas tree um, and it kind of get it not guesses but you use the camera to show it where the LEDs are and then it knows where those LEDs are for your pixels so you can draw like shapes going around the tree and and things like that and then yeah you can do all these fancy custom effects and you can save them you can only have one effect saved to the controller at a time which is fine really because you can only display one effect on the tree at one time um, but whichever one's saved to the controller will be the one that plays. And then you have to use your phone then to, to switch it. So they work with HomeKit. They work with your Echo, your Google, Homey. They have a Home Assistant integration. Or you can integrate it into Home Assistant using any of those. Um, but those are the ones that that I have, Alex. Did you say you've got some or you were thinking of getting some? If, if I can, um, my video for Twinkly will be out on Saturday, maybe. Uh, let's catch up on the, the comments here. Brad is happy with Zigbee MQTT and also Z-Wave to MQTT, zero JS, sorry. I'm, I'm still not using all that much um, Sea wave stuff. I'm waiting for some Laura Wan stuff to to arrive, which has been held up by the postal strikes and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm really I've been I've been waiting for the Laura Wan stuff for such a long time. But it'd be interesting to have a play with some Laura Wan devices in Home Assistant. You need a stream deck, um, like the Elgato stream deck. 
I do have one of those on the desk, but because all of my um, what do you call them? The I don't know what you call them, like the scenes, because some of the scenes are broken. Um, I don't want to start clicking through them in case it crashes the the stream again. So I'll I'll sort that out off camera at another time, so it's ready for the next one. But I do have a stream deck. I also need to. I think it's that transition when I do a transition, it cuts off the audio, so I need to fix that too. But yeah. Um, but if you said Steam Deck, I also have a Steam Deck. Yeah, you know, if I read your thing wrong, I have one of those too. Oh, nice. So, Brad, you now do DevOps. Do you enjoy that? You really want the pre lit tree because you're lazy. <laughs> Um, let's have a look at the, uh, it's one of these ones, is it Alex? The prelit. Ah, I changed to, how much are these things? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, that is going to be a time saver, isn't it? Um, having a prelit tree with, with those lights on as well. And I guess you don't, you probably don't even have to map it because it just knows where the lights and stuff are. But yeah, <laughs> light tree. I mean, I I would I would personally get one of those too because I I don't really like doing the the tree. It always just makes me itchy. <laughs> um. Am I interested in doing a local voice assistant? Yes, 100%. Um, I might even try at some point maybe to see if I can do like a little, like a, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, I might see if I can do like a, an interview type style thing kind of video um, with Mike, the guy who actually creates Raspi. And if you didn't know, next year's focus for Home Assistant is going to be all about voice control and local voice control. So they're actually calling it the year of the voice. So if you are interested in local voice control, then definitely check that out. The actual last stream I did was actually all about um, setting up Raspi, which is a local voice assistant system. And yeah, that, that's what I ran through with that. It, it works well, like for controlling your, you know, set smart home domains. And that's what's nice about it, because you're not going to be asking that thing who won the football last night. You're just going to be using it to control your smart home things. So it should work quite well for, for what you want. As long as you've got a good microphone as well. It needs to have a, a good microphone. Oh, so... Um, so the thing with Twinkly, what was best for Home Assistant? So if you've got Twinkly now, I would say uh, the best way to control them currently is through HomeKit. Um, so that that's, that's all I was saying with that, Claire. Um, so with HomeKit, because the issue that I've got at the minute with the, the integration uh, prior to 2022.12 is if you turn the lights off, you can't turn them back on sometimes. I'm, I'm not sure why, but you can with HomeKit. Um, but I think that is fixed. I'll be doing some tests with that later tonight uh, with the 2022.12 version. And with 2022.12, you can control the lighting effects. Whereas you can only just, you can control one singular color for the whole tree um, with the current integration. Um, I'm not sure about the postal strike thing now, um, but they were, I know that they were throughout November. So we're in December now. So I think that they've stopped, but there was like, you know, massive time slots throughout November in the UK anyway, um, with Royal Mail not delivering post. So there was just lots of no post. All out of stock. Was was that the string lights? I I think I think that they um obviously because of the type of lights and stuff that they do. I think obviously Christmas is a massive selling time for those guys. So I wouldn't be surprised if they are sold out. Yeah, so John, if you're interested in a local voice assistant stream, I did do that one. The last live stream that I did was with the guy who actually creates the software for it. Um, he wasn't in the stream, but I kind of, I just started 
streaming, setting it up, and I didn't read any instructions or anything. I just went for it just to see how far I could get. And I did get it working, but I did have the guy that created it in the chat helping me. So yeah, um, sort of towards the end of that video, um, I, I do show some like voice commands and stuff of, of it working if that's what you're interested in checking out. I think uh, Lewis from Everything Smart Home also did a video on, on setting it up. So yeah, he's I think he's got a full video on that. I I just never released my video on it. I was I was waiting for it to develop a bit more. I, it's it's cool and it works, but it's not there just yet. Um, it still needs some refinement, which I'm you know hopefully we're going to see now in this coming year with the Home Assistant Year of the Voice. So yeah, if you're if you're really into voice controlled and having a fully local voice assistant then watch out for this year uh, a youtube short was that for the um for the twinkly stuff was it claire yeah the postal thing was really annoying um the annoying thing about it is i don't know if this happened to other people as well but i actually had a few parcels from china because they were just sat there they it looks like anyway in the postal tracking stuff it looks like they went back to china so they came to the uk and then because they didn't get delivered they went back which is really annoying so i got to wait and get them back oh man okay so is that for december alex oh man so alex is saying that there's current december royal mail strikes are the 9th, 11th, 14th, 15th, 23rd and 24th. So if you're sending Christmas presents in the UK, like, yeah, that, that's going to suck for, for Christmas. Oh man, yeah, that, yeah, that is December. Yeah, so 9th, 11th, 14th, 15th, 23rd and 24th. So, yeah. Ah, well, I, th I thought the, the strikes were all done. So I guess I'm not going to see any of my parcels till next year. But there we go. And rail strikes. All the strikes. Ambulance strikes as well, isn't there? So. But yeah. There we go, guys. I think I'm probably going to wrap that up here. Again, let's change back. Let's change the camera back. <laughs> yeah, I think with the next one, it will be more structured. We'll do some polls. We'll do something so that we can actually um get the content and i'll i'll figure out what went well i know what went wrong with the software so i'll just make sure it's all working for next time but do you have any last minute comments or anything you want to ask before we wrap this up am i still using the ns panel yes i am uh i, I talked about this a little while back uh in this video uh and if you if you want to see some live NS panel stuff, then let me know because I'm going to try and do 12 of these streams. So maybe we can do that NS panel in one of those. Um, but yeah, I'm still using it. I've, I've been using it ever since I did that video. I installed it in that video and I've, I've used it since then and I've not had any problems and it's been, yeah, it's been working well. I do know that now Sonoff have changed the firmware on them. So if you buy one now, as in like now, now, if it's got the newer firmware, then that setting where you can just um, start talking to them wirelessly is disabled by default. So I think you now do have to plug the device in and take it apart to do that. But again, I could look at that in a stream if that's something you're interested in, because I'm actually waiting for some sewn off stuff. And one of the things that I'm waiting for is that new white NS panel. So that should have the latest firmware on. So we could take a look at that in the stream if that's something people are interested in. Yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for stopping by, John. Um, hello from Belgium. Hello, Brian. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we will have more stuff in the stream. Um, but that's the idea of these twelve streams is to try and get better at doing this stuff because I I really like the whole aspect of of speaking with you guys with not speaking to you. So. Yeah, it's, it's fun. So if we do some practical stuff too, that will be maybe interesting for me to see how you guys do something if if it's something that I can't do um, or I can physically show you something in a little bit more detail. That's quite nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, see, Alex Alex knows the score. If you like the stream, then uh, drop that drop that like on the stream. Like, do it do it right now while I'm while I'm while I'm watching you. Yeah, drop it a little like. Um, can I recommend a heating thermostat? Not at the minute because heating is one of the ones that I put off doing because I wanted to do other parts of my smart home. And I did say I was going to do it for winter, but we're in winter now, so it's probably not the best time to start taking my heating stuff apart and doing it. So that's probably going to be one that I do a little later in the year. I do have some heating controllers um, from just either things that I've I've been... I've been sent or ones that I've I've got just ready to actually have a go at doing things but I can't recommend anything yet just because I've not I've not personally used any so yeah if if I do get one I'm gonna have aim to have it fully local I don't really want it to be cloud connected so I'm gonna try and get something local Tado is is Tado local Alex um so I, I don't have a heating controller, but I've got the little radiator valve controllers. And if, if you have been here for a while, you'll have heard me talking about, like, I'm a big Akara fan. Um, then my radiator valves are from Akara. So I've, I've never used, um, ah, I've never used Tado. But yeah, Alex is saying you can Tado through HomeKit. So there you go. Congratulations on your character and approach. Thank you. I th that's that's a good thing, is it? Thank you, Jason. <laughs> it's probably it's probably a little bit different, is it? Seeing seeing me talking um, as opposed to tu tutorial tutorialing teaching. Yeah. Um, so that video on the Yuffie stuff as well. I'm gonna go and watch that now and. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely talk about the Yuffie stuff, and I'll give you my my two p on that in the in the next stream. I think I'll try and I'll try and do a poll. I'll try and get some questions and cool things to talk about, and I'll also try and announce it when it's going to be. So maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. Just you know, check that check the the feed and everything. But yeah, it'll probably be the same kind of time that that I've done today because it's convenient for me like after work after the kids are in bed so yeah i i should probably unplug my yuffie doorbell right yeah sean you are indeed late to the party but do not worry there's going to be more streams um but i am i am about to wrap this one up but i will answer your question um what would i recommend as the main method for automation setup Node Red or with Home Assistant. So as in just the standard Home Assistant automations, I guess. Um, yeah, this one is is totally a like a personal thing. If you've if you've only used one, um, then try the other one out to see what you think about it, because it's it's down to you or use a, a mix of both. Um, at the end of the day, it's your smart home. So Alex saying use Node Red because Node Red's the best, or Alex saying I'm, I'm picking on you, Alex. Sorry, um, Alex saying use the Home Assistant ones because they're the best. Um, it's it's your house, like do use what you want to use and give them a go. They both have pros and cons. I personally make use of both. I for like quick automations and um, things where I want it to just be a small and concise automation, I'll use Home Assistant, but. I anything that's time based, I'll I'll use Node Red just because for me, I I just prefer that visual aid of being able to see where the nodes are and especially especially with time based things because you can see like oh at this time this node activated and then it caused this one to you know like that. But hey, if you'd wanna if you wanna see some of those things in the stream, then uh, then let me know. Actually, in fact, before I go, in the comments of this video. If there's a set topic you'd like to see, then uh, write them write them in the comments there, um, and then I'll I'll read those and I can yeah, tally up what people want to see. So yeah, let me know what you'd like to see in the in a stream one of the one of the twelve or one of the eleven. But yeah, yeah, definitely definitely have a play with both of them, Sean. Um, I I like both of them. I use both of them. I I use both of them for for different things. So. What about Python Demons? 
hey, Claire, we're, we're supposed to be wrapping this up. Uh, yeah, Python demons are cool. Um, you want to see them in a stream? <laughs> right, I'm going to wrap this up. And I don't think Casper would, would sit still for an hour uh, to, to be a Casper stream. But we'll, we'll see Casper in some, some other videos, definitely. Right then, guys, thank you very much for, for tuning in. And again, I'm sorry that the yeah technical difficulties just led to me being a talking head for over an hour. Um, thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to drop that like. And I'm, I'm imagining you're subscribed if you've, you're you writing in the little box there anyway. So, but yeah, thank you. Leave a comment on what you want to see and uh, we'll, we'll do something cool in the, the next stream. Catch you in the next one. And I, I would say cheers, but I, whenever I press the button, I'm sure it doesn't stop. So I'd probably be sat there, but yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your evening, daytime. Uh